Hey, hey friends, welcome to the Amazon Files brought to you by Mommy Income. I am your host, Kristen Ostrander. Happy New Year. It's a new year. Are you excited? I am super, super excited. As a matter of fact, um, this is going to be a short and sweet episode because just in a few days, I am flying to see um, some of my uh, clients for the workshop, the d workshop in Dallas. I'm so excited about that. Y'all, we're having another trade show workshop experience um, in February in um, Las Vegas. So make sure you go to mommyincome.com workshop and check that out. I'm just so excited. I'm getting ready for this. So this is going to be a short and sweet episode because I am getting to the planning of uh, bundling with some of my new students. I can't wait to meet them and it's going to be absolutely amazing. But first and foremost, I want to say welcome. Welcome to 2023. It is a new year. And I know for some, for most, that's usually an exciting time. Time to leave the past behind and see what's forward, to dream, to look forward to what's ahead, to plan and to get excited about your goals, your hopes, and your dreams. Now, I don't know about y'all, but I'm actually super glad 2022 is over. It has been full of all kinds of challenges, both physically, emotionally, spiritually, in business. Um, dare I say, it's been one of the worst years that I've had. It's hard to admit that to you. It really is. I'm just being honest. It's hard to say that out loud. I know that I am a source of inspiration and motivation for a lot of people. And so for me to sit here and say to you that I had a really, really rough year, um, it's hard because I don't want you to be discouraged. I don't want you to be discouraged that, that, oh my gosh, the person that I look up to or the person that I listen to and are following and, um, you know, supposed to be successful is, is having, you know, issues. Well, I'm also human. <laughs> I am not flawless. I am not perfect. Um, and guess what? Neither is the, um, Amazon that we serve, right? <laughs> um, when we're working with Amazon specifically, we know we are at their mercy and we're also at the mercy of a lot of things we cannot control, which can cause problems and issues. But guess what? Hope is a stronger emotion than fear. It's only, it's one of the only emotions that's stronger than fear. It's actually hope. And the real, the reality of having a bad year means that you, what, you can really only go up from here, right? I mean, can it get worse? I guess we don't even want to ask that, you know, but the reality is despite the challenges, there are solutions to our issues. There are solutions to our problems. And 2023 excites me because I have new goals. I have new opportunities. I am opening my eyes to all of the different things that God has planned for me and what I've got planned for me and all of these different things. So I'm excited about 2023. As a matter of fact, I have this great inspiring story of we just never, you just never know. You never know who you're going to meet. You never know who you're, you're, you're going to inspire. You have no idea um, the impact that you're having on someone else's life. And so uh, I have this fun story to share with you, and I'm just going to keep this short and sweet because um, I just want to, I just want to get to a place where we're all excited about what's coming and not always so worried about what's, what, what's already passed. So my niece shared the story with me. Um, she is 18 and she has gotten into reading recently. And one of her first books that she ever read that got her into reading was called Tuesdays with Maury. It's by Mitch Album, and he is a fantastic author. He writes uh, inspirational and uh, different things like that, that he, the stories that he writes and it's fantastic books. And so that that book she was exposed to, I think, in school at some point she had it was part of the recommended reading and she had to pick from this list and she picked this book and it greatly impacted her life and she loved it. And so she read all the rest of his books and now she's been a nonstop reader ever since. This has been a couple of years now where she's really been into reading and um, like she's asked for mostly books for Christmas. So recently she was at um, a local mall here. Um, it's one of the fancier malls, you know, the one that has like Louis Vuitton and all the little stuff like that. So it's we call it the fancy pants mall. Right. Um, the bougie mall and so she was there with a friend walking through and she saw some commotion in the lower level where you can kind of see in this mall where you can look kind of look down and then there's you, there's several different levels well she saw this kind of commotion and gathering and there was some cameras and some things and she was wondering what is going on she's very curious and she's also very shy so what kind of happened next kind of shocked me um, so she started looking and she always is nosy and curious and she wanted to know what was happening. So she tells her friend, let's go get closer. I want to see what's going on over there. Like they have cameras, like what are they doing? She's like, maybe there's a celebrity or something. So they sneak down there and they're kind of looking up and then they re they realize like there's this whole table full of books. Well, she's a book lover. So she's like, books, what's this about? So she literally walks up to this lady 
at this book table and she's like what's going on here and the lady tells him oh well um Mitch album is here and he's doing a book signing for his new book and she literally like turned white as a ghost she goes oh, are you kidding me she's like he's my absolute favorite she's like I, I read his first book and then I read this book and she's looking at the table and realizing she's read all of his books except this new one that he's just releasing so she just happened to be in the right place at the right time where she's she's walking through this mall she she sees this commotion she goes down and she looks at this book table and realizes her favorite author the one that got her into loving reading is actually there in person uh signing books and doing this you know book signing in this book release event and she had no idea about it so she she looks and she realized he was right over there and she kind of got nervous and she's like I, I just i can't wait to get this book and 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 get it signed and she was nervous because of course she's really shy and things like that but she shared that and then sure enough she got the book and went over and got it signed and she was able to share that story with him and now i'm going to set you back here this author has been around for over 20 years this is an 18 year old i heard of this book when i was in high school y'all and that was 20 plus years ago so before she was even born he's writing books and continued on his journey and on his path of what he wanted to do to impact the world and then here she is coming so many years later to his book and then this and they got this chance meeting and she was able to share her story with him and just to say that you never know who you're inspiring you never know who's looking and watching and doing um and using the work that you're doing even your own kids even your own family your own spouse your parents people are looking and watching and they see they see what you're doing so even though you might have a rough year and you had a rough year and you don't, and, and maybe your business has dropped by 20%, hello, that would be me. But still, what they're seeing is despite the challenges, despite the hardships, despite all of the different things that can maybe stand in our way, we're pushing through. We haven't given up. We're showing them that even though there's challenges and really, really hard years and heartbreaks and disappointments and all the different things that can set us back. Our not quitting is moving the next generation forward. They're seeing that we have not given up. They're seeing that we're continuing to do the work that's meaningful to us. So that's a question I have for you in 2023. What is the single most important thing that's going to give you the most fulfillment, the most joy, and that feeling of success that you're after? What is the most important thing that you can do to bring more fulfillment into your life? Because nobody at the end of their life that I've ever heard has said, wow, I really wish I were to worked a lot more. Do you ask an 80 year old, a 90 year old, what they would have done more of in their life if they could go back? I highly doubt that they're going to say, oh, I wish I would have spent more time at work and less time with my family or less time having adventures or less time reading a book or leisure time or encouraging other people or whatever it is. They're not going to say, I wish I would have worked more. So it's just something to contemplate and think about as we head into the new year. Sure, we can set goals and do all that. As a matter of fact, I might be planning a session that we can have that, that is helpful for, for goal setting to really get very intentional. And I don't mean just your typical goals and everything else. Everybody does that this time of year. And I almost cue the eye roll, except for I actually did it last month <laughs> because I'm ready. I'm so ready for this year to be over. I wish it was over in December. <laughs> So I'm so glad that it's a new year. I can literally feel like I can wipe the slate clean and start all over. And if you always do what you always done, you'll always get what you always got. So you've got to do something different. My challenge to you this year is to do the meaningful work. What's important to you? What do you value? And this is your own personal de decision and it's it's whatever you value is what you value and that's fine there's no right or wrong answer for that but discover it for yourself what do you value most in life and how much time and energy are you putting into what you value most 
because honest to goodness, if you examine a lot of lives and uncover and peel back the layers, you can see what they care about. Do you know there's two ways to do this? There's two ways to examine what someone cares about most. Two things you need to look at, your bank account and your calendar. That will reveal more about what's most important to you than anything else. What you spend your money on and what you spend your time doing. And I just got to ask, do those things line up with your true self and what you truly believe is the most valuable thing? Are you spending your money on things that you value most? Are you spending your time, slots on your calendar, your free time, your leisure time, if you have any? <laughs> what do you spend your time doing? Because if you say you care about visiting grandma, but it's never on your calendar and you never actually do it, then you don't truly value that. If you say that you want to invest in a cause that's important to you, and yet you never put your money there or your time there, is it truly valuable to you? I'm not here to judge. I'm not here to pass judgment. I'm not here to bring shame or guilt on you. I'm just shining a light onto the truth so that it can change you for the better. And really, it's not just you. It's me. I took a long look at my calendar this past year and a longer look at my bank account this year and realized I was not spending my time excuse me, I'm going to get emotional here. I was not spending my time and my money the way that I truly, what I truly value in my life. And so it's time for a change, a big change. Because what I do value is not getting the most of me. And they deserve that. I deserve that. So that's the change I'm making. It's very vulnerable and real, but that's a way to examine it, self-examine. If you got, if you have the guts for it, because it's written in stone. It's already happened. Where do you spend your time and where do you spend your money? And is that creating lasting value for you? Because if it's not a hell yeah, then it's got to be a hell no. Because anything else that you're not, pardon my language, but if it's not a heck yeah, I absolutely want to do that and value that, then it should be an absolute no. And if we really boil down what we really value and care about, there's so many things that can go away. So many decisions you don't have to make because you're pleasing someone else. It's like, no, this is what I love. This is what I value. This is what I treasure most. This is where I'm going to spend my time and my money. And that can never be lost. It's an investment into yourself or maybe the people around you, or a cause you think it's really important, or your spiritual life, or whatever it is that you're investing in, the ROI is immeasurable. When you finally get rid of the coulda, woulda, shouldas, and the, the decisions we make based out of guilt or shame, or because someone else thinks we should, or because we think we should because we saw it on Instagram. Y'all, no. We need to stop letting other people determine what's valuable to us based on their Instagram posts or their, their uh, excellent marketing, right? How many times are we roped into another thing because they just get their marketing message so good that you can't help but see, yeah, I need that. I want that. Filter everything in 2023 by what you value most. You say, does this lead to the growth of this, whatever this is for you? Whatever your goal is, whatever you value most in life. If the answer to the opportunity isn't going to grow that thing you value most or give you more of what you value most, the answer is just no. It's not super complicated. So my challenge is for you to take a few minutes to, to analyze your bank account of what you've spent money on in the past 12 months. Just go look, look at your bank statements, look at your credit card. What are you spending your money on? And then look at your calendar for the past years, for the past months. What do you spend time doing? What are you making a priority? And is that something you still care about? 
I'm not saying you have to care about anything. Whatever it is that you value most. Look at your calendar, look at your bank account, and see if they match up. And if they don't, we're not guilting and shaming ourselves anything. We're just deciding that I'm no longer going to say I value this, and then my life doesn't meet that, my, that, that doesn't match up. You know, if you, if you value uh, retirement at a certain age, then you're want, going to want to regularly contribute to a retirement fund so that you don't have to work forever. If you value your time in that, then building a retirement portfolio is going to be extremely important to you. And your bank account and your calendar should reflect that. If you want to grow your business this year because you absolutely can't stand your boss anymore, how are you spending your time and your money? I'm asking you to unapologetically cut things off that aren't serving you anymore or you think they were going to serve you, or you were doing it to please some other person. Guess what? If your mother-in-law disapproves of what you're doing, are you going to die? Did you die, though, when you tell her, oh, no, thank you. Sorry, we can't come. Did y'all know that that's a complete sentence? You can literally say no to things, opportunities, and people without explanation. <gasps> The shock, right? Some people are explanation people and some aren't. Excuse people, whatever. Oh, I couldn't do this because of this, this, this. No, how about just, no, thank you. I'm unable to come. Thank you for thinking of me. You know why? Because I'm no longer going to do things out of guilt or out of um, obligation or, or meaningless obligation, I would say. And I'll go re relate this back to my book, Dreams Big, Step Small. In case you guys don't have it, it's a great read for the new year. I mean, you can get it on Amazon. You can order a signed copy from me. I'll send you one personally and with a note and probably some goodies because I can't help it. Um, but there's a story in there. I talk about that, that one time I was roped into being like a volunteer weekly in my daughter's second grade class. And it was absolutely the worst commitment I ever made. And because I'm a person of my word, I kept my commitment. But then um, at, after like, what, three months, I was like, I'm sorry, I can't do this anymore. I just felt like it was something I should do when they were passing around the sign up sheet. Like the last thing that was left on there was like this read, parent reading thing every Friday from like, 9 a.m. to noon or something or an hour or two or something it wasn't super long but I was like I do not want to spend my every Friday morning at between 9 and 11 reading to second graders I know it sounds hard right it sounds like oh what kind of mom are you honestly it's the last thing I ever wanted to do it did not bring me joy it brought me stress and it brought me like I'm just not the right person for this so that's what I mean by that is that we say yes to so many things that we don't need to because we feel like, oh, that's something we should do. Or, you know, what are they going to think of me if I say no? Or how are they going to judge me? Or are they going to cut me off? Or how is this going to impact me if I say no? That's not your measuring stick. Your measuring stick is what you value most. And what do you value most? And what does that do for you? What is the main benefit of going after what you value? Peace, fulfillment joy, success, and satisfaction when you stay in a place where you know these are the things I want to be doing and the things that I'm doing, the tasks I'm doing are directly impacting what I value most. If you can say that, then you are absolutely on the right track. And if you need help figuring all this stuff out, y'all, this is my zone of genius. I really, you know, you see that sign back there, it says coach. I'm going to read it to you if you can't see it back. A passionate, dedicated individual who unlocks hidden potential and maximizes a team, a team's performance by believing, encouraging, and developing. You get all that? That's what I do. That's what I love doing. Maximizing the potential you have inside of you. And guess what that means? That means sometimes literally unapologetically cutting things off that aren't serving you. Could be a person. Could be a schedule. Could be a class. You never know. But dig deep and ask yourself that. Look at your calendar for a few minutes, your 2022 calendar, and look at some bank statements and just randomly pick up maybe one per quarter and just kind of look at, oh my gosh, I spent 80% of my money on this or my, my leisure money on this or my time. 
and evaluate if that's still important to you. Just think, look, examine. That's how we grow. Can't do the same things over and over and over and expect a change. That's the definition of insanity. And I just want to leave you with some encouragement. Although it's really, really hard, it's really hard to cut things off and to wonder what happens if I don't do this anymore, what happens if I don't do this anymore, especially if it's making you money. Let's just be real. Let's just open that can of worms right now and deal with the elephant in the room. Like, Kristen, I'm doing this job that I hate, but it pays me money. How can I, am I supposed to just quit my job? Well, that's not exactly what I'm telling you. I'm not saying go quit your job and, you know, don't pay your mortgage and whatever else because you don't feel like working. Like, let's be real here. We do have to provide finances um, if we're in a position to have to. But if you're not, let me just be really blunt. If your business is not responsible for keeping all of the lights on and paying the mortgage and all that kind of stuff, if it's literally just a side income that you're doing, then by all means, you have the freedom to not do things you hate. I mean, if this is what's paying the bills and keeping, like, at my house, like, I, whether or not I hate things, like, I have to have this income to support my family. So it's not something I can just unplug and stop doing. But the things that you hate, if it's something that's like extra income or something you just want to do because it excites you or you're really successful at it or whatever your reasons are, then by all means, stop doing the things you don't love. You're actually going to make more money when you do things, when you outsource things that you actually hate. In the beginning, you're thinking, oh my gosh, I'm going to pay somebody $100 a week to do this. I'm not going to make more money. I'm taking money out of my pocket essentially in the beginning maybe for a few weeks but with that hours of time that you're not spending on that task that you hate you're going to fill those hours with doing stuff you love which means already instantly you're a better person you have a better outlook you have relief and when you have relief you feel you have more capacity to do things that you want to do so that's just my encouragement to you Get rid of something in 2023 that's no longer serving your values. And unapologetically, I know we, we, we tend to not want to let go of things um, for fear. Like what happens? Like what? This is 10% of my income. Well, what happens if 10% of your income goes away? Read the chapter and dream big, sex, small. And look at the trust the facts, not the feelings, right? What are the actual facts? What actually is affected if 10% of your income goes away? Like I was just talking to a client recently who was doing retail arbitrage. Retail arbitrage, she refuses to let go of it, but it's only 10% of her business. So we actually crunched the numbers and was like, how much money are you actually losing out on if you cut this completely off? And she was shocked to be revealed that that 10% or so, make it doesn't, it's not worth it. Yet she felt like she was just, I got to get this done. I got to get this done. I got to go do some arbitrage. I have like, because it's always what she's always done. And when you actually point out that you're only making $200 a month by spending eight and a half or 12 hours at most weeks doing retail arbitrage and packaging it up and sticker peeling and all of that kind of stuff, you're only making like 10 bucks an hour. Is it worth it? And once we kind of unraveled that, she was like, that's the easiest thing to let go of. I hate it. And it's only making me a few hundred dollars a month. Why am I, why do I care? Exactly. So that's what I mean. Taking it, take a real intake. Get, this takes time, y'all. Time. It takes time to sit down and give yourself the space and the energy to figure out what you really want. And what are you doing right now to support what you really want? Because we want more than just more money. We want more than just more money. Why do you want more money? What's that going to do for you? Well, it's going to give you more opportunity to do other things, spend more money, go travel. Um, it, who knows? Dig deep. Ask yourself those questions. What will more money give you? Okay, when you reach that answer, then say, okay, what do you want with that? Why is that important? And then when you finally discover your aha moment of what do I really, really value? then a lot of the stuff begins to fall away because you realize if I really value this over here, then why am I doing this over here? That has nothing to do with this. 
so many of us are wasting our time and energy on things that actually don't impact us or matter. And it's time to just evaluate that and figure that out. Your happiness, your fulfillment, your joy, your success is at stake. It's a worthy hour to spend. And if you honestly don't know how to spend that hour, I have tremendous resources for you. I can help you. You can book a call at mommyincome.com forward slash coaching. And I can help you figure this out soon so that you have all of 2023 to plan and be a better person by this time next year. Have more of what you want. Have peace and joy and fulfillment, not only in your work, but also in your personal life. It affects everything you do. So it's really, really important work to sit down with yourself and think about these things. We are so caught up in the busy day-to-day -day tasks that we don't often sit back enough to realize what we want and need. And is it the same as it was last year? Well, guess what? No. We're a new person. We've gone through different things. We have new experiences. And maybe what we did this previous year isn't serving us. I will tell you that. I'm reducing my business by half joyfully joyfully and yeah it's going to come at a cost it's going to be less income but it's also going to be less work which means i have more time to do things that are really valuable to me and i'm okay with it but i did grieve the loss i will not lie i did gr while i was working through this and realizing that the decisions i needed to make were going to cost me I had to grieve the loss. I had to realize that I'm going to give up 50% of this and I'm going to be okay with it because what I'm gaining from releasing that is far more valuable to me than anything else. This is hard stuff, y'all. Most people don't do it. They walk through life blind. They walk through life unaware, just going through the motions and doing the same thing they've always done and deep inside longing for something more. But in order to have something more, you've got to do this hard stuff right now. Answer these questions. Evaluate and look at your life. And guess what? This can all be private. So no one's looking over your shoulder telling you not to value this or not to value that. Or, oh, wow, I can't believe you spent so much money at the mall this year or whatever it may be. This is just for your own, your own personal private evaluation of what you really want. You don't have to share it with anybody. I mean, I don't care if you want to lose 50 pounds because you want to look better than your ex-husband's new wife. Who cares? But if that's what you want and that's what you value, how are you lining up your time and money and scheduling to get what you really want? That's the question I'm going to leave you with. And I hope it's helpful because the, when I do these things myself, there's these aha moments and these light bulbs that go off to be like, wow. I spent a lot of time and energy doing something that, although I enjoyed, was not what I value most. And time is shorter than you think. Have you ever lost somebody suddenly or even like when my, my dad passed away and he had cancer and um, he was from his diagnosis to the time he passed was about 18 months. And when something like happens, it changes your life. It changes the way you look at time. It changes the way you look at money and and all the things that you do in day-to-day -day life things stop on a dime when something you value most is in jeopardy so i want you to take that kind of urgency with this year it's hard to pretend that we have limited time because that's not really our reality um, but when, when you experience it through someone else's eyes or someone else's experience is not as impactful as we have but Time's going to go by whether we waste it or not. So my question is, what do you value most? And how are you going to align your time and money in that direction? Y'all, happy new year. Truly happy new year. A fulfilling, prosperous, joyful, peaceful, calm, intentional new year y'all i know you could be anywhere else doing any other thing i don't take that for granted thank you so much for listening to the amazon files podcast thank you for giving me an audience to serve it is my joy and my pleasure see you same time same place next week on the amazon files